Okay, so my personal favourite valves uh, that were in the back of the Lampazator when I started this video were the 112A valves. Um, one thing you should note, and you can see there are little hoops with plastic end pieces on them, is that some valves are what we call microphonic. And what that means is if you tap them, they'll ring like glass. And that, from a perspective of sound, can create problems. Um, it's believed that that actually changes the sound if a valve is microphonic. So what you need to do is try and dampen that ringing effect that can affect the sound quality. Now these are called Herbie's dampeners. Um, they're not particularly cheap. Do they make any difference compared to cheaper dampeners? I'm not sure. I've always had these. They seem to work. I think the mechanics of it's quite straightforward. I don't want the glass to ring. So the majority of dampeners I'm sure will do a very similar job. Now the cult item that I've got stood up there next to that rectifier valve is the 12A which is a later version of the 112A. Now this is seen as a really end game valve and what it does is push the sound again a little bit more forward and make it slightly more punchy. I don't actually think it's as good as the older valves the 12A, uh, the 112As that I've I've had fitted in the Lampazator. So initially like a lot of things it will feel because it's pushing that trouble a little bit further forward it will feel a bit more punchy and dynamic um, but there's something lacking for me and it's hard to put my finger on it so I don't usually run those. There's not a vast amount of difference and if you had them you wouldn't be disappointed um, but they're just not quite as good. Now from the modern valve side this is quite interesting you can see here I've got the KR Audio 242 and all of these valves are extremely similar to each other in terms of sound. The 242 is known as the most dynamic valve that you can get on this unit. So what does that mean? It means it's linear, it's going to give you great punch, it's going to give you dynamics, it's not going to soften the sound at all. And these aren't particularly cheap, I think they run at about £900 a pair. But they are modern valves, so you can still buy them. And I do like them. There are a couple of things you should be aware of. And the main one is how much voltage they put out. They're very high output valves. Now, what that means on my preamp is I could put my preamp to, let's say, 10 or 13 on the older valves. And on these, I would put the preamp to around volume of 3, maybe 4. They are very, very loud. Now, why does that matter? Well... With the audio research, there's a couple of things that you've got to be careful of here. One is listening late at night, which means my volume of one, which is my lowest volume, isn't actually that quiet. So if it's 12pm, I'm going to annoy the neighbours. And the other thing you should probably be aware of is how much volume your preamp can take. So some preamps don't like huge amounts of gain being sent to them. And if you do this, you can... Uh, you can create a sound that's clipped. So your amp, your, your preamp has to have some sort of headroom in order to cope with that really high output. And if it doesn't, you could end up with a horrible mismatch. So I would say if you are going to run the 242s, you need to be aware of how much headroom your preamp has got. Now for reference, I'm using the Audio Research Reference 6 here, which copes with these just fine. But, coming back to my earlier point, I actually prefer the 112As, which are far, far cheaper, and um, second-hand, obviously, they're coming from America. So just to let you have a quick look at some of the different valves that you can get here, uh, you can see the black, slightly rounded base, uh, third from the left, is the 5U4G. This has got an upper arrow on it, which means it's a military valve. And on the left, you can see a much more modern U54. It's narrower. You can see it doesn't have that slightly rounded base. And then the second one there is a Westinghouse. So what 
are we looking at here? Well, this U5, U, uh, sorry, getting the name right, uh, 5U4G is actually a very expensive old valve and highly regarded, seen as one of the best of this type. If you look online, you'll see reviews of this. What it does, it makes the sound darker. So yes, it's extremely well reviewed, but compared to the Acme, it will chop the treble off somewhat. It will make it sound dark. Um, and then on the left, all the way on the left, the U54, this will collapse your sound stage. It will make your system sound dull. Uh, it really will not be very good. The Westinghouse is probably one of the better middle of the road valves. I think this one is around 50 or 60 pounds. It's not bad, but it kills a stereo image, so it's not great. So what am I getting here? Well, like I said before, you're getting big differences in sound from one single valve in this in this stack. 